Hold on. Is this better? Is <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna have to stand all the way back here for you guys to see the full length of this thing. <laughs> All right, so today I'm going to start building Law's sword finally. I've been meaning to do so for a while now. I want to build it to scale, which means that this sword is going to be like six feet long. I'm going to be making it in the scabbard, so not two pieces. It's all going to be one big piece. I did already do my measurements for this. Basically, it's going to be six foot long. Um, I have the handle being about 14 and a half inches and the scabbard itself being about 58 inches long, something like that. Um, I'll do, I'll redo the math before I start doing this. I've learned my lesson from Buggy's Axe, okay? My thought is that I'm going to do this in two pieces of foam, add some cardboard for that flat edge and then, um paint, add the ropes that are needed, add the fur lining, and then that should be it. I'm making this for a convention that I'm going to that's nearby. Um, so I don't have to travel with it. So I'm planning on making it as one piece. <laughs> so it's literally going to be just six feet long. Like I'm not making it in pieces. It's just one big one. If it works the way that I want it to, we will see. <laughs> This is the foam piece I have. Um, it's over six feet long, I know that part. So here is it all mapped out. It looks extremely large because it is. <laughs> it's the scabbard part to the handle part. And then I just sketched out the angles that I'm gonna want on it. Since it was so thick, I had to cut it twice with my box cutter, once on the front and once on the back to get it almost all the way through and literally almost okay and then it's almost there so it should should just snap apart like snap off pretty well let me get rid of this part first never mind okay it was pretty easy there oh ASMR, no one asked for. Oh, hey, okay, okay, now let's do it again on the other side. Well done, but, okay. Ah! <laughs> so this will be how tall it is. <laughs> Here I am cutting out the handles so I needed to mark the back side so I would know where to trim down with the box cutter and get that smaller shape for the handle. Hold on. Is this better? Is... <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna have to stand all the way back here for you guys to see the full length of this thing. <laughs> Okay, so I found an article online about how to properly sand this type of foam. To get the shape that I want, I'm basically gonna have to make tools myself. I got a piece of wood and um, I traced like the sides of how long like the sword is on this side. Um, and then this is like the shape that I want for one side. So both sides are gonna be like this um, to come together to be like a cylinder same thing on the other side um, but for the handle now it's going to be cutting out these so be basically my tool um and then putting some um sandpaper on the inside where that edge is um and then using that to sand it um to the correct sizing my neighbor was nice enough to help me with this part because um, I really don't like the sounds of power tools but we cut out the shapes that we needed and then we sanded it down once we got them nice and smooth, I went in with my hot glue gun and I just attached some sandpaper and I trimmed it down so that they wouldn't be too much excess. I have my two pieces, my tools. I used some um, sandpaper that I had in my garage. Um, I don't know the actual grit, but I know it says fine and I tested it out on um, some scrap foam and it was working really well that's what i'm working with so i'm going to test these out um i think it should work i start with the 
handle um, and work my way down. Eventually, once this is flush onto the bottom, um, then we'll be good. I think. <laughs> The first try of sanding this sword did not go my way, I'm gonna be honest. This was probably at least 20 minutes of me trying and failing. Okay, so it is working. Like, I can feel this is smooth, and like, this section that it's <laughs> doing um, is working, but the um, sandpaper is not staying adhered to the wood and also remembering that um i have to <laughs> bring this down so much down to here um that i might just go in with a knife and cut a lot of this off too um to cut down on how much i have to actually sand down on this part we'll see if that works out for me and instead of coming up with a solution right away, I instead just decided to flip it over and try the other side since I wouldn't have to sand as much down. It didn't work out for me. All of that work <laughs> to get this little bit, but this little bit is done beautifully. It works. It's just gonna be very, 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 tedious I forgot to do this earlier but please make sure you wear a mask this is the best one I've got right now um but yeah a respirator would be phenomenal if you're working with any type of foam please make sure you wear a mask this is where I started coming up with the first solution um which was trimming the edges of the part I was going to sand first and sanding them a little bit by hand before going in with the tool. So with the sandpaper, it's lifting up on the edges and it's giving me problems. Um, like, cause as I go to group like this, it lifts up and it's like creating um, like divots um, that obviously I don't want. If I take the sandpaper and then um, kind of lay it as a bigger piece and then cur like turn it so that it can um, like turn. Okay, so now it looks like this. Um, so maybe this is going to be a much longer process than I really thought. And try number four. So we start with trimming the edges, sanding them down a little bit, and then going in with the tool. And I did vacuum every time, and Annabelle doesn't like the vacuum. Okay, that seemed to work so much better. Um, so that really just took me a couple of minutes. So I might be able to get more progress done tonight, which is awesome. So I'm going to do that. Okay, this is the progress of day one of sanding. A lot more to go. Day two of sanding has got the whole part done. Just have to do that one and the whole other piece. Alrighty, I finished sanding all of it. So that is both of the pieces put together. It's nice and they're perfectly smooth, but that's okay. It's pretty smooth. I like it when I glue them together. I'll go back and like get the um, edge a little bit better up here. Decent. I'm not. I'm impressed with myself. I feel like this, these two pieces together. I mean, it's like what three inches thick. Um, it's pretty stable for like. I don't have a fear really that it's going to break. But up here, obviously, is thinner, so I'm a little scared. Um, I might just put this little piece of wood just to add some stability in, um, in between these pieces to add some stability from the handle down into the uh, sheath a little bit. So I think that's gonna be the next step. Great. I traced the wood piece on one of my pieces where I wanted it. Um, and then I needed to obviously get it perfectly aligned on the other side so that they fit. Um, so I used some, some of my fabric glue that I used for his pants that I was doing and I just put a few little dots along so that I know where I need that indentation to be on the other side too. Um, 
and I'll just wait for that to actually dry so I don't lose them as I go through with the um, box cutter and yeah. Alrighty, now that that is all cut out, I realized I really didn't have to do it on both sides because um, this fits in perfectly and when I put it on, this will provide enough stability on just one side. So, But now that it's flat, I just need to add the wood glue. <laughs> this big tub of wood glue that my family has in our garage. Before I use this on my actual um, foam, I'm going to test it on scrap pieces. I actually sand it down to be like, kind of like what I would be putting it on, on uh, here. This one's gonna be to test to see how smooth I can get it with this wood glue, um, see how many layers I need, if I can fill in these parts with it. Using wood glue as a primer. I have some other pieces here. This one's gonna be more so for testing the stickiness of the wood glue um, and if I'm gonna need a different type of adhesive when putting these together. Okay, after 10 minutes, this one, I'm gonna give it more time to fully dry before I do another coat. These two were getting pretty ticky. <laughs> we're getting pretty tacky so I put them together and I put some weight on top and I give it time to dry see how they do together Hi. <laughs> okay so it's been like two hours probably um and this is dry um you can see it kind of sunk in you know online where i've seen um like tutorials on like using wood glue on stuff or on foam and stuff um they usually do about three coats so i'm gonna try three coats see if it like fills in some more of these gaps you know it definitely is like good as a primer on this um type of foam so that's good <sighs> yeah that's not that's not coming apart um so good yay <laughs> Looks like I'll definitely be using this. I'm gonna put another coat on this. I'm gonna keep testing out because um, I wanna use this as a primer to fill in all the holes and stuff on the outside of it. So we will see. Side note, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but the paintbrush that I used, <laughs> I just let it dry <laughs> after I did the first coat. Now it's hard as a rock. It's stiff. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. And for that wood piece to add the stability to the handle, I basically just filled in that channel I created with wood glue and put it in, put a little bit of glue on top to fill in the gaps. And then I put some games on top and I realized that's not enough weight. So I put some wood on. This super heavy piece of scrap wood <laughs> is on it. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that works. Well, wow. All right, so after two coats, this is looking pretty good, honestly. It's nice and smooth up top. Um, it's got a little bit of divots, so I might try the third coat and let that dry, and I'm going to make sure that that wood piece is okay, and then probably try to attach these. Yay, wood glue. The wood piece was perfect, so I wiped everything off with a dry napkin, and then I started adding wood glue. Once both pieces were fully coated, I let them dry for a little bit to get tacky and then I taped them together to keep them in place and then I added weight. So let's see how this did. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Pretty lucky that I just happened to take apart a big heavy dresser. Okay. Well, <laughs> some of the glue has <laughs> pushed out on the sides. <laughs> There's glue now on my table, so hopefully that comes off. It looks like it shifted a little bit, so I'm gonna have to shave the sides pretty good. Let's go ahead and take off the tape. Okay, right, actually, I kind of want to show you guys. Oh, glue <laughs> dripped out. It shifted a little bit, so they're not perfectly even anymore, which stinks, but what are you gonna do? Somebody tell <clears throat> my dad that I got glue on this glass. If nothing else, I have goo gone, so that's all the tape. Yeah. Oh, that baby is not coming apart. <laughs> Yay! Now I get to peel the glue off the sides. 
Oh, I'm excited for that. Let's sand these down. I should be able to do that like with just um, my hand and then paint. And the test run of the wood glue as a primer, beautiful. It feel like you could, it looks like it has more divots than it actually does. It's really nice and smooth up here. Like, I wish you guys could really see it. It's good. So three layers of that. That's going to take some time <laughs> to do on that. I might need more wood glue. Weird. Unfortunately, I have been down and out for about 10 days probably because I've had this incredibly bad migraine. Um, but you're exactly two weeks away from Yumicon and I need to get this baby done. But I have some salt eater and I have my sanding. I'm gonna get this done. I really wish I would have just glued that sandpaper down to that piece of wood because I kept having to fix it, but it was, it was fine. Um, it was basically just sanding down those edges. It was really satisfying to get it nice and smooth on those edges. It was so nice. And now that I had it nice and smooth and cleaned up, I could start adding the wood glue. So I first did it on the side because I figured if I messed up, honestly, who's going to be looking at the edge right there, right? Not me. So put a coat of the wood glue on the first edge. Just kind of fill in the gaps, try and get a nice smooth edge for that. We'll see how that goes. All right, we flipped and did the next side in the first coat. We're gonna let that sit. And the first coat is done. Once that dries, I'll be able to start coat number two. So, yay. I would like to say that I was using a plastic knife to apply the wood glue um, and it worked out really nicely and no other paintbrushes were harmed in the making of this. Almost out, so I went and got some more wood glue and we're gonna start coat number three. The new wood glue was a lot thinner than what I was working with from that jar, um, so it did have some drips that I had to deal with. And that is the last of the third coat. So we'll let this dry. All right, now that all three layers have dried, this is nice and smooth. Now it is time for the first layer of black. Hopefully it'll just take one layer, but I might need more acrylic paint for this entire thing. <laughs> For the paint, I wanted to make sure that it was really smooth, um, so I used the softest brush that I have, and it was a wide brush, so I got a lot of coverage out of each stroke. All right, layer one of the black is looking really nice. It's already pretty much dry, and I literally just finished painting, so that's good. I'm gonna be able to do a good coat on this, and didn't take as much paint as I expected so once I flip it over do the other side and then I'll probably do at least two coats thanks for helping Nana all right now for this part I had it 12 inches by 6 inches but that seems a bit too big so I'm going with 11 by 5 I'm going to just cut out a square and then I will trim it down to be more of an oval shape I used my sanding tool to give a rough estimate of the handle so that I can cut it out and I did mark the center piece so I'm going to try and get this a rough cut out so that I can slide it on. All right so now that that fits on I'm going to paint this and then add some um, furry stuff around the sides and glue it on. Two coats of blank and the rest of my black acrylic paint and I went to the store and got satin acrylic paint this time. So I'm going to try that and see if that gives the shine that I actually want on the sheath. And so for the handle thingy, I don't know what it's called. The top of the handle. I can't remember what it's called. But so for this part, I just happen to have the perfect little scrap for it. So this is like perfect. Um, and I'm just going to use E6000 
to adhere it to the edge and I think that should work. We'll see. Boom. So this is all dry now and honestly the difference between these two sides is so yeah, I'm super happy with this new satin acrylic paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And I don't know if I don't, I don't think I'm gonna need another coat. I think I'll be able to start the little crosses. I did make a template using some coated cardboard that I just happened to have. Um, so I had three crosses on it to be evenly spaced. And then I went back through with the acrylic paint on a brush to make sure I got good edges on them. All right, we added the gold piece onto the end and it does have a little strip up there. I'm gonna do another coat of this metallic paint I got. It's just in um, champagne pearl. It's like a goldish color, but it wasn't like a bright gold. So I thought it would be a good fit for this part. We're almost there. Look at that little, ah. So good. So we're almost there. Um, and now what I want to do is basically I want to give it an extra coating um, to protect it, you know, from you know, life. Um, so what I got was this um, Dura Clear gloss varnish. It's good on acrylic paint and stuff. And I tested it on our handy dandy test run. Um, so it unfortunately adds some, you know, lines so it's not like super smooth unfortunately um but i'd rather have it protected and last longer than you know not <laughs> so i'll probably do two or three coats of this or as many coats as i can probably with that bottle um and yeah and then i'm just gonna attach the handle wrap the handle and i think we'll be good to go I used that same soft bristle brush for this so that I could get it as smooth as possible. And I did also, I don't think I mentioned it, but I added purple paint to the handle just to add that little purple touch that he has. Y'all, I love it. Oh my God, I've only done the first coat and this is exactly what I wanted. Yay. Like this is only coat one and it's got the perfect shine already to it and it's soft it's not um streaky like the test one was it's oh my god i'm so excited y'all oh my gosh okay i flipped it over and you can see the difference between this coating and the acrylic the satin acrylic paint that i had to gotten that was shinier than the matte acrylic paint that I was already using so you can see literally see the difference it's so much better oh I'm so excited for this guy I'm going to protect it by using this fabric craft uh water shield basically waterproofs the fabric um so I'm gonna make sure that this is all good to go as well Still don't know what it's called, but I added this part um, with wood glue and I've had it sitting up here with some weight on it for a little while now. So let's go ahead and, oh yeah, that's not going anywhere. You're good to go. All right, and then I'll wrap this and add the rope and you'll be good. For the handle, I basically wrapped it with a really thick yarn. Um, I just used a tan color because that's the best I could find. Um, and I just followed a katana wrapping tutorial that I saw on Pinterest. I used medical gauze that I had, which was very fitting for law. And then I did go in and secure everything with crazy glue. For this part, I couldn't find a red rope that I actually liked. So I ended up using a red version of the yarn that I used for the handle which was perfect and I used that for the tassels and tied it off and since everything else is getting coated I made sure to waterproof these as well all right there she is oh look at her I am insanely proud of this oh my goodness make a cuckoo so, 
this is Law's sword. <laughs> I'm literally leaving today to go downtown for the convention and I will be carrying this around um, Yumacon on Saturday. Yay! Okay. You excited to go to grandma's house for the weekend? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I'm law finally. Oh, I'm so excited. And I've got overhaul with me. And um, we're about to go to the One Piece meetup now. <laughs> Look at my Kukuku. Okay. Let's go. Making our way downtown, literally. That is cute. Me and Kukuku. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 